Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Wizards of the Coast and the release of a lot of new product. Now before we begin, the argument that you don't have to buy the product is true. You don't need to buy every single product released. And as I will talk about Command Anthology and Arc en Enemy, as well as Commando 2017, they may not be products for you. However, I did want to go over the repetitive nature of such products. We just got Modern Masters 2017, and now it is announced that there will be something called Iconic Masters, and that will be released November 2017. Now, we will also get Arc Enemy. We get Arc Enemy Nico Boles in June 2017, and we get Commander's Anthology in June 2017. Then in July, we have Hour of Devastation with its new logo, the Nico Boles Horns. After Hour of Dev Devastation, we get the Commander 2017 decks. We get four of them. And then I believe in September, we get a, a new set, the set after Hour of Devastation. And then we get Iconic Masters 2017. So budgeting your magic expense has become a important skill set that you need because they hype this up and then you spend more than you have and then you end up in a scenario where you kind of regret buying that conspiracy too because then they reprint the Eternal Masters again and you could get Eternal Masters for 180 bucks or instead maybe you bought Modern Masters 2017 for 250 for three hundred dollars a box which is horrific when i think about it now and then the box price drops to two hundred dollars and you're kind of like oh man i really need some money for Cat." the same will happen with commander the same will happen with the anthology sets what is happening here is you have new management how do i know they have new management well I would have been happy if Modern Master 2017 was just Snap and Liliana. I think most people expected just that, given what they printed in Modern Masters 2015 and Modern Master 2013, which actually increased the price of the cards they were getting reprinted. Think about that for a moment. In 2013, they reprinted Tamagoyf, and Tamagoyf went up in price. Tamagoyf is a sub $100 card, finally. What the new CEO, as well as the new people around him, his new team, has decided to do is quite interesting and something that there are two main sign signals things have changed in the secondary market. The first one was Eternal Masters. When he double printed Eternal Masters, no matter how you define double print, that's not important, right? Was it a distribution run? Was it at the actual printing level? What, what happened with the double quote unquote print? Doesn't matter, supply just doubled, right? And the boxes have tanked. Eternal Master boxes tanked just in time for Christmas. Then Modern Masters 2017 had way, way more expected value than anyone believed. Goblin Guide, Damnation, Blood Moon, and those aren't even the chase. I mean, if you got the five fetch lands, the five enemy fetch lands, you got Lily, you got Snap, you got Lavana. Wow. I mean, when you compare, when you look at the cards that are actually in Modern Masters 2017 before they started plummeting due to the reprint, and most people were expecting Snapcaster, and most people were expecting Liliana. A set with that much value of Tamagoyf. Not even as the main, I mean, the fetch, the five fetch lands at rare, I think, are a better, are a better indication of what a value, where value is than Tomagorf and Mythic, the single Tomagorf and Mythic. But then you also get foil lands and things of that nature. I'm not going to go into too much, but the, the value, the set of the value is exceedingly high, but you still have places like Dave and Adams at 220 a box shipped to you that cannot sell. These boxes are not moving at 220, which is insane because they need cash to buy Amaket supplies or to push Amaket. So 
to summarize what has happened here is Wizard of the Coast has taken a extremely active measure against the secondary market. The secondary market, especially that of singles. Now, I don't understand booster boxes as well. Um, booster boxes, I am more of the opinion that you should never open a box. That if you want a box just to have as a collector's item, just buy it as that. But as soon as you open the box, unless you're drafting with it or you're doing sealed or you're having some utility of it, you will lose 60% of the value of the box, generally speaking. And that's why boxes, for me, don't have... I mean, you'll just sit on them for quite a while and it's very difficult to move them due to shipping as well as just the fact that this, the people who want a box is le uh, much less than the people who want a single in that box. Small side. So what you are left with is you are left with a scenario where Wizard of Coast has, as policy, determined they want to reprint as much as possible. Before you think Iconic Masters is going to be a crappy set, it is not going to be a crappy set. They got it correct with Modern Masters 2017, which is to stuff all the value you can, reprint every single card you can get in the set, and, and sell it like hotcakes until you cannot sell it anymore. And that's what happened with it. I'm sure they made quite a bit of money. And more importantly, the player base is very happy with it. Overall, I think Modern Masters 2017 was highly successful and something that they would want to repeat in Iconic Magic. Now, Iconic Magic, what is Iconic Power 9 Dual Lands? Am I suggesting that the reserve list cards might be in this set? If they were ever to be in a set, it would be this one. Now, I don't think they would ever be in a set, but if you wanted to push the envelope and you're a new CEO and you get to Magic and you're an outsider, you come from Microsoft and you bring in your team, you fire the Magic Online guy who's been there for like 25 years, what are you going to look at the reserve list and say? You're going to say, what? Why do we have this? The same, like I can imagine him saying, okay, so why do we not reprint all the modern cards in Modern Masters 2017? What, what are we waiting for? Look at all this free money for us. There is even more free money in the reserve list card. Much more free money in the reserve list cards. The issue I have is they have a very, I mean, either the reprints are going to be obvious. At $10 a pack, they have to be good, right? The reprints will be Mana Drain. There'll be Imperial Recruiter. Maybe Tamagoyf again. Uh, that would be interesting to see. But there's, they don't have much selection anymore because they've already reprinted so much. Maybe Corn Liberated again, although he was reprinted in 2015. There's not much room for them to print iconic magic cards. And trust me when I say this, they're not going to reprint janky cards. This will be iconic. You're not going to name this set the way you've named it and ask $10 a pack and not deliver something fantastic, especially given how Modern Master 2017 was, and that you can still probably in November buy boxes of Modern Master 2017 on a marketplace. The market has not soaked up boxes of that yet, and I don't think it will for a long time. Now, the overall argu argument that this is too much product, you know, there, it's a cash grab. It, of course, it's a cash grab. What else could it be? That's what they should have done in the first place. They, they should not have been like, oh, we're not going to reprint this to protect somebody's collection. You see that they're no longer making that argument of protecting someone's collection, which 2013 Modern Masters was all about that argument. They went in great detail uh, talking about how much they're going to protect someone's collection. Since this new CEO came, there's no talk about that. Which, if you were to speculate, they're going to run out of cards to reprint, quote unquote, and the only ones left will be the ones on the reserve list worth any money. And he is a new CEO. Imagine that you're a new CEO and you go to Wendy's and Wendy's has this amazing menu and you cannot print it because you, you promised your customer base 25 years ago that you would not, you know, um, make this type of sandwich although you know the sandwich is extremely popular the ceo the new ceo wendy's be like what the hell are you talking about we need to make the sandwich 
I believe that's what might be going on with the CEO of Wizards of the Coast. He may be looking at this reserve list, which he has nothing to do with, he has no understanding of, and he's not involved in it any way. That was the original team that's been there for 25 years that has now been let go. And he's looking at the reserve list and he's saying, well, what is this? Why can't we do this? And the arguments, oh, well, we promised collectors a long time ago, is probably not relevant to this particular CEO. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. Bye, guys.